welcome back. Today is the new foundation video of the week and I have something really special here because I have an entirely new brand that has popped up and I decided to pick up not only the foundation but also the concealer and just to see what we're working with here, see what they're coming out with. They launched with a huge bang this new brand. They launched not only with the foundation and concealer, they launched with three different eyeshadow palettes, a bunch of different formulations of lip products. I think they have metallic lip, a gloss and a regular lipstick, and graphic liner, a contour stick. I mean, they launched with it all. And not only did they launch with that huge range, but they decided to launch their foundations with 51 shades, their concealers in 17, so I think that is really awesome for them to come out and do. This brand is coming into the beauty industry saying they want to rewrite the rules for inclusivity and diversity, which I think is really awesome. So that's why they're launching with such a huge range right from the get-go. I mean, I think other brands should take a little bit of note there. <laughs> It's got to be very expensive to come out and do this, especially for a new brand. So I really applaud them for that. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started with the foundation first. Let me show you this packaging because they have a really good message on it too. So front and center here on the box, it says, Stronger together, we are an empowered tribe. Our race is human. Our people are free. Our language is color. And I think that is a beautiful message just to have right up front here. I love it. And then on the side here, it lets us know that it's dermatology tested, it's paraben free, D3, D4, and D5 3, talc free, cruelty free, and vegan. So lots of good stuff with this foundation. Oh, and I did pick up the shade Fair Lady T3N. And then let's just go ahead and take the bottle out. And here's what the packaging of the bottle looks like. And you do get a full fluid ounce for $39. So it is a little bit of a higher price point foundation. I do have to say it was a little bit difficult shade matching myself. This was entirely online. They launched a few days ago. They are going to be rolling into Ulta, I think, with the full range. I haven't really heard too much about that. So I think it's going to be the full range. So it'll definitely be a lot easier if you're able to go in store in person because I did take a look and I did not shade match myself right, which I kind of figured because the pictures that were online were not the greatest. I mean, it was the bottle of the foundation and one little lonely swatch. I mean, it's so hard to shade match yourself if there's no real comparisons that you can give yourself. So let me just show you what this shade looks like. This again is the T3N in the Fair Lady range. So here's what this looks like and I, I should have gone maybe two shades lighter, maybe three. <laughs> Let's do a little side test here. I mean I think I can make that work and make it look like a healthier look to the skin. You know it just wasn't the easiest shade matching myself online that's all I'm trying to really say. So I'm definitely happy they're going to be in store so that way you can go in person and get a little bit of a feel for it. Don't worry, when I get to the concealer, I'll give you guys a little comparison swatch between the two. But uh, I'm going to leave that swatch there to dry down and see if it also oxidizes. Oh gosh, I hope not because then it'll be way too dark for me. I'm going to put two pumps on the back of my hand here because I'm just going to go ahead and go in with it and then we'll continue talking about the foundation. I am going to use a brush on one side and a sponge on the other. So let me start with the brush side and I'm just going to take a few little dots here from the pump I put to the back of my hand. And I did put the two pumps there, but I did not use the full two pumps. I used maybe one and a half. And I'm going to go in with the Sigma F82 brush and work this in. It does look like there is some good coverage to it, but man, <laughs> that is not my foundation shade. Also, I do apologize if my voice is a little bit iffy. I am just getting over a cold. I'm so sorry. But this foundation does say that it is supposed to have adjustable coverage, so you can make it as full coverage as you want, I'm guessing, and as sheer as you want. I did put a lot of products, so we're going for more of a full look here. It also says that it's supposed to be long lasting. No real specific claim as to the hours. It is a vibrant matte finish with a blurring effect while also being hydrating. Really cool. And it says it has biomimicry pigments that mimic the skin for a flawless finish. Ooh, look at that. And actually that is all that it really says about the foundation. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't say anything too too crazy about it. So we will put it to the test today though. Oh man, I gotta make sure I really get in that hairline though. I'm faking quite a tan. <laughs> Looking 
up close though, it does have a really nice finish so far. It does look pretty matte already. It doesn't look too dewy or anything like that. There is good coverage. I do have this pretty large blemish that was on my nose that it was able to cover. You know what, let me get you a little bit closer just so you can kind of see because it was pretty red right there and I did have some red blemishes under there and it looks like it's covering. Not too bad. I mean, if this was my perfect shade, I'd probably leave that right there, but I'm just gonna detail around a little bit, add a little bit more here and there where I think some of my natural skin's poking through <laughs> and bring it up onto the ears. In a situation like this, I do have a color mixing pigment. I have this little LA Girl foundation mixing pigment. I would have just put that in with this foundation and mixed it around, made it my perfect match, but I don't want to alter the foundation in any way before we get a feel for it. So I would just do that next time I go in with this foundation. Dang, my camera just died. <laughs> I don't remember where I was. I was putting on new foundation on the side. Um, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a couple dots here with the leftover two pumps that was on the back of my hand here and we're gonna use the sponge on this side. So I'm going in with the Wet n Wild little sponge here. This sponge is the bomb. Highly recommend, it's like $3.99 I think. Really affordable and awesome. So I'm just gonna bounce it in on this side of the face. I think I'm just gonna take a little bit more, maybe one more pump here of the foundation and I'll just dip from the back of my hand here. Is missing a few areas. It is really good coverage from the sponge too though because I did have some blemishes here too and it is covering that up quite nicely. That is a beautiful finish. I did put on my brows first before the foundation so I'm leaving this little section. I'm gonna take a teeny tiny little brush and just work in some product around the brows being a little bit more careful. I have stamped off my brows before with using a sponge. <laughs> but here is the coverage of the foundation and I actually really like the application on both sides. I'm really impressed with it. It does have a really nice comfortable matte finish. It doesn't feel like it's overly drying down but it does feel like it is locking itself into place and not remaining tacky which I really like. So let's complete this look here so I don't look so crazy. Let's go into the concealer. This is their Stay Woke Luminous Brightening Concealer. It retails for $25, and I love how they put the little woke here. That's really cute. And I did get it within the same range, so it has also the like, blue little top. This one is in Fair Lady T2. Ah, oh, gosh. Did I, did I get the wrong shade here? Okay, so that's what a swatch of T2 looks like compared to T3. Oh my gosh, is the foundation oxidizing? Ooh, it's drying down. Once it's officially dry down, I'll touch base with that again. As far as this specific shade being the perfect shade for my normal skin color, I would say it's a little bit darker and I would probably go one to two shades lighter just because I do enjoy that brightening effect underneath the eyes. For the foundation in which I have right now, <laughs> this is probably gonna work out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with it. I'm gonna put a little bit of concealer underneath the eyes. I went a little bit ham on this side, so I need to kind of even it out there. Usually I don't put that much. <laughs> and I'm only gonna put it underneath the eyes because with foundation wear test, I don't like to put it all over the face. I feel like you're really only testing out the concealer then and not so much the foundation. So Concealer is just gonna stay underneath the eyes today and we'll see how it performs under there if there's any creasing or whatnot. But this is supposed to be full coverage with a thin skin-like finish, which is a little bit interesting to me because I mean, it's supposed to be full coverage. Maybe it just means that it's not supposed to feel heavy. We'll find out. It does look like there is some good coverage. What do you guys think? I mean, I don't really have any kind of dark circles under the eyes. I'm pretty lucky at this point, so I don't have a lot of discoloration to work with, but I do think it had some good coverage to it, and it does not feel heavy under the eyes or really thick. And the concealer also is paraben free. Let's see, it's also formulated without talc or D5, and it's fragrance free and vegan and cruelty free, so good stuff there. 
So it is full coverage, it is buildable, it does not have a thick feeling to it. So if you compare it to say the Shape Tape, which is one of my favorites, it is not as thick because this is a very thick concealer and if you have a drier under eye, I really don't recommend it for you guys because it is a little bit more on the matte side. And this one does feel really good underneath the eyes. It doesn't feel like it's overly drying too thick or cakey or anything like that. So it feels pretty good so far. I'm gonna tell you guys the time really quickly. Whoop, turn on phone. Turn on. There we go. It is now 8.08 a.m. We're gonna use that as the starting point for today's foundation aware test as our check-in starting timer. I'm gonna pop off camera really quickly, just set a little bit of powder down underneath the eyes, add some bronzer, some blush, some eyeshadow, and then I'll be back in just a couple seconds and we shall do some testing of this foundation even more. So I'll be right back. Just like that, I have the rest of the makeup on, which I just threw on a little bit of powder underneath the eyes, a little bit of bronzer, a little bit of blush. Like usual, no highlight because I feel like it'll exaggerate the oiliness that is in my face because once more, let's say it together now, I do have a very oily skin type, so I don't like to put highlight on testing days just because it can exaggerate the look of the oiliness. And I mean, once everything is applied, the foundation shade doesn't look that crazy, but <laughs> I'm feeling it oxidizes. I left the swatch here to see if it does and it's gotten quite dark. A lot darker at least than what I think it initially was. So let's put a little extra swatch there. Oh yeah, look at that. It oxidizes like another shade I want to say. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> I'm faking a serious fake tan right now. <laughs> Not on purpose. With that in mind, I would probably go down maybe three to four shades now because it oxidizes an entire another level. I mean, I would 100% recommend going into Ulta when they hit stores. I think it's the 5th of May, so this month on the 5th, they will be inside of Ulta. So if you're interested in this one, definitely go in stores, do a little swatch, walk around, and then let it dry down and see how it holds up to you and you know choose your foundation that way because I think that would be so much safer. I clearly did not do a good job self-matching online. <laughs> I did also leave the swatch of the concealer and let that dry down. So let me pull out the little wand here and there is the dry down swatch. Dry down swatch of concealer and the first swatch. It looks like that one also does oxidize. I don't think it's as extreme as the foundation oxidation, but it oxidizes a little bit. So, I mean, that shade I would probably go down for it to fit me perfectly, probably another two to three shades. So definitely be very aware of the oxidation. Keep that in mind when you're choosing it. And then I also do one more test. So let me zoom you out because I need more frame here. I need to be able to pop an image here on the screen because while I was off camera doing my makeup, once I was done, I did take a flash photography picture and I just went to a darker lit part of the house, turned on the flash, took a picture, you know, to see if there's any bounce back. And here is the result. I think the foundation looks beautiful in flash photography. There's no bounce back. It just looks like a really even good looking foundation. I mean, if I was taking flash photography the entire night, I would be really happy with the end pictures be like yes so it is flashback approved it is a win in that book and lastly before we jump into the wear test I do want to give you guys some comparison swatches of the foundation I like to give you guys these in the videos because a lot of you ask you know what shade are you how do you compare to other ones so I like to include it in the video so you can see it so let's jump into that so the first swatch here is of course the Uma Beauty Fair Lady T3N that is the foundation we're wearing and testing out today right next Next to that, I put the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Foundation. This one is in Light Nude 120, which is just a little bit lighter. Next to that one, we have the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Defining F3. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Stick Foundation in Soft Ivory. Next to that, I have the Milani Stick Foundation in 200 Porcelain. 
Then second to last over here is the Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation in LC1. I would have to say this one is pretty gosh darn close to my perfect match. And then lastly, this is a foundation that I also got in the wrong shade, but I've been using with the LA Girl Mixing Pigment. This is the Fresh Wear in 455. I think it's natural, natural buff. And I wanted to show you guys this one because it reminded me so much of the Uma Beauty and I just decided to put it here. So if you are natural buff 455, I think this foundation shade, the Fair Lady T3N would be perfect for you because I think these look so similar. I even wanna put a swatch just right next to it. I thought of it afterwards. I'd say that's pretty gosh darn close. That was the last little test, I suppose you could say, that I had to share with you guys. Now all we really have to roll into is the wear portion. So it is now, let me turn up my brightness, 9.09 a.m. I've been sitting here talking for like another hour, which is pretty standard. I'm thinking around lunchtime, I'm gonna give you guys a halfway check-in. I'm aiming, like always, for at least eight hours in this foundation. We're gonna see if we can push it, get it on the face a little bit longer though. So I'm really excited to see how this wears throughout the day. So far, I'm really enjoying it, but you never know. Sometimes foundation can just plummet throughout the day. So <laughs> I'm excited to see if this ends up working working out. So let's just go ahead and jump into the wear test. Time for the first check-in. It is now, focus camera, focus, 12.25 p.m. So we're just a little bit over four hours now. And let me get you a little bit closer here. The foundation is looking beautiful at this point. I mean, it's looking really smooth out here on the cheeks. I have a little bit of a shine going on right in here in the nose area, a little bit here on the forehead. But honestly, that is not really bad. I think it's looking pretty decent. I would probably just set it down with a little bit of powder just to be on the safe side if I was doing touch-ups. I did really like the way I did it with the pure foundation and I just touched up on one half of the face just to see how many touch-ups we ended up needing. So let me take you to my beauty room and we'll do a little touch-up. I'm going in with the ColourPop Sheer Pressed Powder in light and I'm just taking it on my Morphe Y11 brush. We're gonna use it on the right half of my face only. I'm gonna take a little bit of that powder. Just take away a little bit of that oil right here on the cheek a little bit in towards the nose right there, a little bit out. And then I'm thinking just a little bit here on the forehead, stopping right about here. Not trying to bring that powder in onto the left half of the face, so just keeping it right here just to take away a little bit of that shine. And I don't even really think that I need to put any powder anywhere except from these two areas. I mean, the chin's looking pretty good. Out here towards the cheek area, it's looking really good. So let me bring you back into the other light so you can see the difference. So here you can see just a slight little difference. It honestly wasn't too oily. I would have probably left it just as it was right there because I'm pretty lazy with touch-ups, but in case you want to know how many touch-ups I have to do throughout the day, that is number one. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on wearing this foundation for the rest of the day. So far, it does look really beautiful though, and I'm definitely really excited to see how it goes. I will keep track on if I have to powder down on this half of the face again, but this side is gonna remain completely untouched through the rest of the day, so this side is just gonna be all natural. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Oh, and real quick, I'm cutting myself in here because I did forget to mention that there's a little bit of fading around the nose, but that is because I was blowing my nose since I'm getting over my cold right now. My nose has been a little bit stuffy, so that is completely on me, not the foundation fading off. <laughs> it was a rookie move, but I just really had to blow my nose, you know? Hopefully you guys forgive me for that. <laughs> Okay, now let's continue on with the wear test. And it's time for that final check-in. It is now 6.17 p.m. So we are 10 hours into wearing this foundation. Let me just get you closer here. So this, of course, is the side in which I did one touch-up four hours in. I actually have not touched it up since then. It could probably use one touch-up now just to be on the safe side, but I think with just the one touch-up in 10 hour time frame, it looks pretty gosh darn good. And this side, I have not done any touch-up throughout the 10 hours. I'm definitely very oily in the forehead region, around the nose, 
chin isn't too bad, but I still think it looks pretty gosh darn good. I did start to notice that the oils were the heaviest at the six and a half to seven hour mark in, and that is typically when I would powder it down just to keep this foundation going. Because as we can see from this one touch up on this one side, I mean, one time powdering it down and it will keep going. So I think this is a win for this foundation. Aside from that, I don't have any real issues of creasing, caking. I mean, the foundation still looks really flawless. The only thing I have a little bit of an issue with is the smile lines, but that tends to happen with most foundations. So nothing really crazy here. I mean, everything else looks just really good. I do have some minor rubbing off here on the nose around this area, but that I told you guys earlier, I did <laughs> below my nose. Rookie move when testing out foundation, I did do that. So it's not the foundation's fault. And the concealer, let me get you a little bit closer here. I do have my natural creasing of my eye just right along here. And if you don't pay attention to that, I think the concealer actually looks really good. I don't see any real creasing with it. It's held up really nicely for 10 hours in. It feels really good underneath the eyes. The only thing I did notice what it, is that it looked a little bit dry. I definitely would test it again though with just a different powder and see if I'd get a different result. But other than that, I think the foundation and concealer held up beautifully. So I'm really happy with how this foundation review and concealer review went for today. It's definitely a win, which makes me really excited. I'm definitely a lot more curious now into testing out more from Uma Beauty. I think I'll have to pick up one of their new eyeshadow palettes since they came out with a huge range and everything is just brand new. I think I have to test it out for you guys and see how that performs too because I'm very happy with how today want. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this foundation and concealer review video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little bell button, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!